Okay, it looks like it looks like we're live on YouTube and Instagram. Bonjour mes amis, hi friends. My name is Cece and my pronouns are she and her. I yeah. Uh, Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to need, I think I need a new camera for YouTube because my MacBook Air camera is like a little bit weird for a live streaming. It's not, it's not great. Um, but it is what it is. Um, reach the grace and... Gosia, welcome to the live stream, and AJ, <coughs> and somebody on YouTube. Um, it's my first live stream. Hi, Olita, on uh, Instagram. It's my first live stream in 2021. All of my previous live streams were... Um, I guess it was like that Christmas holiday season kind of a thing. And um, I was I was doing a lot of work and it was a very busy season and that was super amazing and I'm super grateful. Um, on Instagram, if you see like right here, there's like a weird reflection. It's because I dropped my phone outside on the pavement and I cracked like the top, the two top corners of my phone and the camera is like right here. And there's a crack that goes on top and a crack goes underneath um, the camera. And so the little reflection you see here, that's the crack. Um, Katie to the hop, welcome to the live stream. So, it's just another live stream. I am basically working to um, fill up the retail space for tomorrow. My um, my sort of open day that is where I take walk-ins and you don't need an appointment to come shop. Um, so I have a whole bunch of really, like some really fun plants, um, some plants that I haven't worked with before. Um, and so I'm just going to be working on those and just like normal. <clears throat> oh, my voice is so rough today. Just like normal, you can ask me um, anything you want as long as we're keeping it classy. And you guys always keep it classy. So, um, Chicken Buddy Burger, welcome to the live stream on Instagram. Um, so I'm, I'll just show you the the like what I have to work with. So um, there's these these um, pot mums, which are like super colorful. Um, these these can be like kind of like lots of water. Um, I got this cute little um, crown of thorns. So that it's a it's also it's a type of euphorbia. So it's got these little flowers and like really pokey, um, really pokey spines. Um, but really cute. They always come out sort of, they, I mean, they get lots of them for like the Easter season, but I guess these ones are um, a little bit early. Um, seven pieces of nature, welcome. Oh, I'm trying to click wave and I keep missing. Um, and Soma Kenji, welcome to the live stream. Um, I'm just showing off what plants I'm gonna be working on. I got this cute little begonia rex. So there's lots of varieties, um, but this is the red variety and it's like 
it's just, it looks like it's painted metallic. It's hard to make out on camera, but under sunlight, it's, these are so, so beautiful. I love them so much. Um, and they're, I find them to be quite an easy plant. I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of these, but um, I have this uh, Monstera Adansani. So it's like, sort of like a small version of the Monstera Deliciosa, but only kind of. So the leaves get these Swiss cheese type holes, as opposed to the Monsteras where um, the leaves will split apart. And then these leaves are smaller and um, thinner. And then I got this jasmine and it's like a vine, but it's like all twisted together. I am not sure. I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle this. Um, like I want to untwist them because they're twisted like in a circle because there's two plants in here and the way it's done, it's like not easy to do kokedama. So I may try to, I might not do this one on the live stream. I think it's gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be stressful. <clears throat> and then I also have this Raphidophora terrasperma. It's known as mini monstera, but it's not, it's not part of the um, Monstera family. I think it's part of Pacriche, which is the same as Monstera, but like, it's like, it diverges from Monstera. And so it also gets these split leaves um, and they split open, um, but not in the same way that Monstera Deliciosa does. And this guy, <laughs> this guy is a really expensive plant at the moment. Um, and it is what it is. It's just kind of super popular right now. So that's what I'm going to work on. Um, and if you want, you can pick what you'd like me to work on first. While I put on my, um, my apron. Michelle Schumann, welcome to the live stream. Just getting set up here. Oh, okay. Oh, this is so weird because my pants have a tie. It always like does this weird bunching up thing under my apron and I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> so I always untie my tie underneath. <laughs> That's better. But if nobody has any suggestions for what to work on first, I think, I think I'm gonna do this little euphorbia first. Um, just cause I think it's super cute. Um, I, I did prepare a whole bunch of moss for this so that, um, so that you wouldn't have to watch me like just sit there and like cut moss for like 20 sec like 20, 30 minutes. Um, Basanes. Welcome to the live stream. And AJ on Instagram is asking, are those real bird sounds? I mean, I assume that they were recorded from real birds, um, but there are no actual birds in the store. And if you've seen my live streams before, you'll notice that my sign is not on. Um, I finally figured out that the, the reason why I get like these, this banding um, when I do my live streams and when I take photos is because of the LEDs in my light. So 
if I turn them off, then it looks great. And if I leave it on, it looks great in the store, but it looks terrible on camera. Um, Stefan, Stephanie, welcome to the live stream. I think, I think I need to go see the eye doctor soon. I think my prescription has changed over the last two years. Um, okay, so, oh, oh, I did fill up on water. That's good. So we'll just mix up some soil first. Oh. This, this past week for me has been um, a little bit, a little bit stressful because um, I am moving um, like residents in 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 about a week. Oh, like exactly a week from now, and. Um, my my friend and I we just we had to like sign the lease and get all the all the uh, security deposit and first month rent and organize um, getting out of my current apartment and reserving elevators for moving day, reserving vans. Um, it's been a lot. I don't, I don't enjoy moving. Um, and I'm very grateful that I, that I live a relatively minimalist um, life in, in terms of like how much stuff I have at home. So I, I think furniture wise, I have one, I have three tables. Um, Kas Zalot five, welcome to the live stream. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. And YouTube, we have three people right now. Hi. Um, and I wish on YouTube I could see who was joining so that I could say hi, but I don't know. YouTube doesn't seem to offer that. But yeah, so it's been a little bit stressful this week. Um, I, I, this is the first time that I will be moving in with a roommate. I've never, I've never had a roommate. Um, so I, I lived with my parents until, like basically until I got married. And I got married like when, when I was 25. And then I went from that to living with my now ex. And, um, and then after we separated, I lived on my own. Um, but my friend a few months ago, um, had asked if I had ever considered living with a roommate. And me and like, I don't know, I think having lived with, always lived with somebody else, um, living on my own was like a little bit lonely. And so, yeah, we decided that we were gonna rent a house together. And that was an adventure too. Like trying to find a place. And my friend is a pianist. Um, so she has a grand piano. And so we had to find a space that would fit a grand piano where the sun wouldn't shine on it and that 
it wouldn't get too cold and all of this stuff. It was very exciting. Raimundo, welcome to the live stream on Instagram. Oh, and oh, Grady73, welcome to the live stream. Seventy three. If that was um, the year that you were born, we are of the same, of similar vintage, let's say. Okay, that feels pretty good. So I am just going to ugh, remove the soil from this little one. Oh, those lower leaves were already damaged. And so euphorbias are really neat. They're, um, I guess they're, I think they're cactuses, technically. Um, and their main stem is six, they're kind of like six-sided, so um, hexagonal, yeah. And you can see like for such a sort of bushy top, it doesn't, it sure doesn't have a lot of roots. Um, June Steele, welcome to the live stream on Instagram. <clears throat> and so with the euphorbia, I have to be careful not to stab myself with the little spines they're actually not that small <laughs> they're pretty big and they're very pointy and even though i'm wearing gloves they're gonna stick me through the gloves And because the euphorbia is very drought tolerant, I am going to make the ball a little smaller just to be proportionate with, um, with the plant part of it. And somehow I have so little room here today. I'm not sure why. I don't know what I did with my organizational skills. And then we'll do the moss. Um, Helen, um, Helen Kim and Absolute Moss, welcome to the live stream. And uh, Jen Hutch, I'm not going to try to pronounce the beginning part. Okay, before I get started, I have a huge pet peeve with this top. 
is because the straps always fall down. And I did once at a restaurant, I was like sitting and taking off my coat and the strap just like came right off and like, it just like my top just came like right down and like, yeah, I don't like nobody said anything because I pulled it back up right away. Um, but if you know how to fix this, if it's fixable, please let me know. I think I'm gonna tie my hair up. <clears throat> um, yeah, but this camisole, like look, it just, I don't know if it's just too soft. I love the way it looks, but you know, sometimes it's like an inadvertent free show or like when I'm driving because I'm moving my arms, it just slips down and you know, but when it's not doing that, it's like super cute. <laughs> yeah, part of the fun. Okay, now I will be mucking with my hair the whole time. The ball just rolled over and fell. It's not great, but it's okay. It's funny, at the beginning of December, I think it was the beginning of December, I ordered 10 bags of moss because a soil and moss, are you making kokedama like right now? Okay, I've never done this before. I don't know, it's gonna be weird. It'll be weird for the YouTube people. Um, of soil and moss, let's connect after this. And let's do, let's figure out a live stream time where we do it together. What do you say? I would really love that. I think it'd be really fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like in, in December, I, EJ Eckert, welcome to the live stream. Um, yeah, in December, I ordered like 10 bags of moss because um, that's all I needed. Like I needed moss, but I didn't need plants and I needed to make um, like this minimum order amount, quali qu quantity, like, like, like a minimum purchase. And so when I was, I was like, okay, well I just need moss. So I'm gonna order 10 bags of moss and um, and I only have, I only have two big, two and a half bags of moss left. Um, so that worked out well. It wasn't, it wasn't planning, um, but it is what it is and it worked out. Which I am grateful for. I was like 10 bags of moss, that's gonna take forever to get through but it really didn't die young. I was really blessed this um, holiday season and um, and yeah, the sales were quite good. We had lots of people supporting local businesses and yeah, it was pretty amazing. Probably, it's probably one of the better um, holiday sales periods that I've ever had in the last four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is my po green polyester thread. 
which is what I love to use. Um, I know some people like to use like um, um, like jute or some kind of twine or like cotton. Um, I like polyester because it doesn't it doesn't degrade when it's wet. And then I pick green because it's about the same color as the moss. Um, we had a peanut, peanuts cake, Lindsay Davis and Rojo joined the live stream on Instagram. Welcome. And we have a couple of people on YouTube as well. <clears throat> I think my voice is funny because I didn't drink enough water today. And my phone overheated while charging overnight and turned itself off. So I, I didn't get any of my alarms this morning, which was super weird. I woke up and I was like, oh, I feel kind of rested. But that was good. And then I looked at the clock and turns out I just slept in and that's why I felt rested. Um, Keiko Succulents, welcome to the live stream. And I guess, um, actually, anybody, um, if there's anybody from the US, um, congratulations. Um, this was a really big week for you also. And um, I think it's a really big week for women, um, you know, having a woman as um, vice president of the country, um, that's a big deal. Um, it's a big deal in, in North America anyways. And I think um, amazing things are gonna come from it, especially from our upcoming younger generations. Pretty amazing. I don't often get political, but if we're gonna talk feminism, I'm 100% there. I'm gonna make some more room. Um, so what what should we work on next? The really expensive Rado <coughs> Rado Fidophora terrasperma or Begonia Rex? Anybody? Anybody? Which one? You let me know while I like clean things up for the next round here. Um, Lynn, welcome to the live stream. Okay, so we have a vote for the Begonia Rex. They're, they're so beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna show Instagram first. So this is the crown of thorns. So 
So the euphorbia. And then for YouTube, like that focuses for you. <clears throat> Very cute. Like, here's my head for reference. Oh, it's dripping. It's like kind of, it's not that big. It's smallish. We'll set that over here. Um, yeah, I guess we just have a vote for the racks. So that's what we're going to do. Let's give this a quick wipe. And I think there's actually two plants in here. So we might end up doing two. Jenny's bottom leaves got all mashed up. <clears throat> so the begonias like it bright, but not direct. They can handle a little bit less light, but they'll grow more leggy, just like most, most plants. It looks like there's four, but two of them are like really tiny. Uh oh, I'm gonna kind of pull a little bit too hard on this one, a little baby one. So I did just separate these. They were like just barely hanging on together. Um, and I tried to cut it down, down sort of the middle so that there would be roots on both sides. So they're probably gonna lose a few leaves though here in the next couple days, maybe over the next week or so because of the stress of being separated but let's work on this Q1 first. <clears throat> Where's my soil? So the Begonia Rexes like lots of, like, you know, they like to stay nice and moist. Oops. So regular watering, um, where I live in Calgary, where it's really dry, that means that we're probably watering every two days, maybe three, depending on depending on your your place. But often,
And I need to get the soil up high enough here because it's, it's a little bit floppy. And then also begonias don't tend, tend to not like <clears throat> their leaves to be wet, like wet, wet. Um, so I like to think if I get droplets of water on there, I like to just dry it off with a soft towel. Oh, Rosso Coffee Roasters, welcome to the live stream. And Little Fam YYC, welcome. I don't think I've seen you on the Instagram live stream before. It's nice to see you. So sort of aesthetically, I really like this size of the ball for this the size of this plant, but because I know that the begonia is like is quite thirsty, um, and because Calgary is very dry, especially in the winter, um, I am going to go with a little bit of a bigger soil ball so that it doesn't dry out quite as quickly. Um, because otherwise you might be watering every day. And if you're used to watering potted plants every day would be, is sort of unthinkable. Uh, with Kogedama, it is not, it's, it, it, it's a thing some, sometimes. <clears throat> okay. I'm just going to set this aside and I'm going to set it here. I like to try to keep my workspace relatively uncluttered because um, for me, a cluttery space makes my brain cluttered and then it makes it hard to, hard to work, hard to focus. Zina, welcome to the live stream on Instagram. And then you see this begonia, how it like, the leaves are hanging down. Um, they can get caught quite easily. And so the way that I deal with them is to just 
I'll tilt the ball so that gravity is pulling them out of the way instead of in the way. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing here. Um, we have some new people, Kosiana and Jay Hutch, Hush, welcome to the live stream. from outside. I'm a little bit scary. <clears throat> and Terrario Jardi Mencantado, welcome to the live stream. <clears throat> and remember that uh, You can ask me anything you want on these live streams. You can ask me about plants. You can ask me about Kokinama. You can ask me about business. You can ask me about my non-existent dating life. You can ask me anything you want as long as we're keeping it classy. <coughs> um, Fifi Keith, welcome to the live stream. Yeah, so these two droopy leaves, I think we're gonna lose them. Like by tomorrow morning, they might be like super droopy. But um, I don't know, we, we'll see. 
So this is the begonia rex, also known as painted leaf begonia. And um, it looks like a metallic spray paint. I think on the Instagram camera, you can really see it there. And YouTube, maybe you can kind of catch it. But it's a, it's a spectacular plant. Like I can't believe that nature, I can't believe that nature does stuff like that. It's, it's just, it's amazing. Um, let's do one more begonia since it's like ready to go. Hmm. Gonna need more soil. I wonder. I wonder if I'm gonna run out of soil first or run out of plants first. Because I'm getting to the bottom of my last bag of soil. And I wasn't close to the place where I get. Um, where I buy my soil from. Um, so I don't have another bag. Um, of Soil and Moss, Moss asks, how many years old is your oldest Kokinama? My oldest one is um, seven years old now. It's a coffee plant. Um, Kokedama was sort of one of the first ones, like one of the first coffee plant Kokedama that I made. Um, and last year at New Year's, actually on New Year's Eve, I redid the, I redid the ball. So that was, yeah, that was at its six years. So yeah, that one will be seven years old now. Oh, so Elma says, hold that thought. I don't know which one. I'm not good at holding thoughts. A lot of times when I try to hold them, they just kind of slip through the cracks. Um, Ro says or asks, are there certain plants that work better than others? <coughs> oh, I am so sorry, friends. Um, there are plants that work better than others and <clears throat> some plants that work less well. Vivek Malusari, welcome to the live stream. <clears throat> um, so the plants that work best are ones that have, um, or that the, are, are the easiest, have a nice strong central stem. Um, so in like, begonias are a little bit harder in that sense, because they kind of flop around. Um, and so similar to the begonias, uh, African violets are a little bit harder, but things like coffee plant um, is really easy. Ficuses are generally very easy. So things that have a strong central stem and a nice um, like flexible, uh, like root system 
So the monsteras tend to have these really fat roots that, that like kind of snap if you bend them too far. And so that makes them a little bit more challenging. You have to be a little bit more careful, but like stuff like coffee plant, um, ficus, um, Sheflora, um, money tree, like those are all quite easy to do. Um, olive, olive tree was easy. Citruses are quite easy. So I'm just adding a bit of vermiculite for <clears throat> water retention because it's really dry here. If you are in a place that is more humid than Calgary, um, you may not need that. Of some of the moss, I did answer the question, but I will answer it again for you. Um, my oldest kogidama is a personal one um, that I redid the soil and moss ball on it um, on New Year's Eve 2019. So at that point, it was six years old. And so it's been a year since then. So, um, so it's like seven years old now, coffee plant. And that coffee plant has had lots and lots of ups and downs. Um, it's gone through a couple moves and um, it's weathered my uh, my personal crises, you know. You know those times where it's kind of hard to take care of yourself, let alone other living beings. Yeah. So, and she's currently in a little bit of a phase of recovery. Um, but I love plants in that way, you know, like plants don't give up. Like they don't give up until they're dead. And um, I, I love that because it's like, I, I shouldn't give up until I'm dead either. You know what I mean? But some days are, some days are pretty hard. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. And it's like, it's a good thing that I have this apron on. Otherwise my top would just be, I would be fiddling with it all the time, I think. Okay, here we go. So this is just the second Magonia. And these lower leaves, I think, are gonna, I'm just gonna have to get rid of them because, um, and if you wanted to, you can, Magonias um, propagate from leaves. Uh, so that's definitely a thing that's doable, but. I'm going to have to lose these because I can't, I otherwise won't be able to get the soil up high enough to support this main stem here. And it's like, yeah, sometimes you got to remove some of the stuff that it's like, it's okay, but it's not, 
removing it will be beneficial for later. And it, it smells so good in here. And I think it's the jasmine. Um, I don't know if all jasmines do this, but they open and they get more fragrant. Or they don't open, but they get more fragrant in the evening. Um, Arju and Olivia, welcome to the live stream. Um, Roses, uh, do you think it would be possible to make a kokedama with a Chinese evergreen? Um, I want to say yes. Let me, I'm just gonna look up Chinese evergreen. And just to see if it's the same plant that I am thinking of. Where? Chinese evergreen. Okay, so when I searched Chinese evergreen, I got this. So oh, what what is it doing? This. And so I do think you can do, you can definitely make a kokedama out of that. Um, if it's like anything, I, I haven't worked with it myself, um, <clears throat> but it looks very similar to like um, peace lily-ish. Um, but I, I don't think it will be challenging It'll be hard if you have a big one like that, but um, if you have a smaller one that is like, like in a four inch pot, I think it won't be a huge challenge. Um, Stacy Sullivan, welcome to the live stream. Okay. Um, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna repot the little two little baby, um, the two little baby begonias. Well, they're a little bit small for kokedama. Um, Not that they're not doable, but they will require a lot of intense babysitting. And I don't have my nursery set up yet. I am, uh, it's one of the things I want to do this year is to have a little nursery set up so that I can um, control the humidity so like just like a little tiny greenhousey thing um, where I can grow um, little baby plants and stuff, keep them warm and humid. So these are the two baby ones. We'll see how they do. We should settle in pretty quick. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Soil and moss has done Chinese evergreen before. Um, I do find that the 
like big bushy plants can be a little, like can be challenging sometimes. Um, which is not to say you can't do it, but it's just, it can be challenging. And then the other thing about big bushy plants, especially ones that come down, is that you you tend to lose a little bit of the aesthetic of the kokedama. Um, like, you know, like if you look at this picture, it, like, you can't even see the pot, not really. And so, um, um, I guess it depends on, yeah, kind of depends on if you're okay with that, you know, if, if the, the growth of the plant will eventually cover the ball, um, then do you want to do that or do you not want to do that? Do you love it because it's just part of the process? Um, yeah, that's entirely, entirely up to you. But if you want to, I encourage you to do it. <clears throat> Oops. Like for me, Kogedama is very much this journey. And I definitely don't know everything about plants. I'm not, you know, like I'm not trained as a horticulturalist. Um, a lot of things I've learned is by um, just researching um, and then being sort of being nerdy about it, understanding that people living in different places will have different experiences with, um, <laughs> with the same plants. Um, and then having to basically experiment with my own plants um, to see how that behaves in, um, in Calgary, the place where I live, because we have a very, arid climate the sun is very soft in the winter but very intense in the summer um and so we we have some sort of unique challenges here that you might not have in some place like florida or um i don't know uh, like tokyo or uh like or a coastal you know a coastal city um, in sort of Pacific Northwest um, in North America. Um, there's going to be different concerns. You know, in a humid environment, you're probably going to be worried about um, like mold and possibly overwatering, where here, where it's really dry, it's like almost impossible to overwater the Kokedama because we get so much evaporation through the through the moss. And so, you know, if it's something that you want to explore, I would say, um, you know, as long as you can afford it, go ahead and explore, but like be just a little bit nerdy about it and really pay attention to the things that are happening and, um, 
And I am, I am working on uh, a little bit of a collaboration project with my friend Amanda, whose company is called Dear Joie. Um, we are working on a little bit of something um, new and unique, and I think it will help. Um, it will help people like us be even more nerdy <laughs> about our plants. Yeah. And I'm pretty excited about that. We have um, we have some ideas, and we were supposed to meet up um, before Christmas, and um, that never happened because our uh, we we um, our province um, enacted some stricter restrictions because of the pandemic, and um, so we haven't gotten together for that yet. But I think we're gonna try to just um, do a couple of online meetings to to put our ideas together. And when I have more to share, when it's not a big secret, um, then I'll share with you. But I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I have, I have quite a few um, collaborations uh, planned for this year. Um, like I really, I really wanted to be able to teach again. Um, but I don't, um, I think our province, like we are not getting the COVID vaccine until the autumn at the earliest for regular people. Um, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to be teaching for, for a while yet. Um, and so I have all these other sort of collaborative projects um, this year. And so this is the second Begonia Rex with those fantastic metallic sort of pearlescent painted looking leaves. Um, uh, oh, my plant is stuck. <laughs> okay, so do we do the cheap, yet yeah, beautiful pot mums, these ones? Um, Haru Frank, Sergio, welcome to the live stream on Instagram. Or do we do this Raphidophora terrasperma, which is um, at the moment only one leaf is has like the fenestration. Um, very expensive. Uh, not quite as striking or pretty, cute, and inexpensive. Which one should we do? And I know there's a delay. Um, so I'm going to set these here. I'm going to clean up a little bit and see if anybody... Um, it jumps in with something. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna get to both, but which one should I do first? Yes, flowers. Of oh, soil and moss, we, we are on the same page, I think. Um, I mean, we are currently um, we're not even in the dead of winter yet. It's, it's been quite a mild, um, a mild winter so far, but these just kind of scream spring. So let's do this first and then we'll get to the Orphidophora terrasperma.
So I'm gonna to try to be pretty gentle here because one, the leaves break quite easy and the roots are, um, the roots also break quite easy. And I just wanna minimize the amount of stress um, that this plant is gonna have. And then this, there's a baby, a little baby plant in here too. That's flowering, which is really neat. Unless it's a branch, it might be a branch. Oops. These are going to look so good in the win in the window. So Rojo is asking like what, you know, are there plants that are harder or easier? So like you can see this pot mum has a very, <clears throat> it has light, like nice, strong roots that aren't like overly delicate. They're very flexible. And then it has a strong central stem here, right? That makes it easier to deal with. And so this branch, I'm pressing it up to see if it's going to be flexible enough to just mash up against the trunk. I call it the trunk. Um, and I think it is going to be. So that is good news. Otherwise, I would probably have to remove it. Okay. My soil is quite wet now because I added that leftover water back into it, but let's see if we do okay. It might be a little mushy. Um, wrapped in moss, welcome. Um, so of soil and moss asks, um, are the pot mums like will they last or are they annual? And so if you planted them outside, they would be an annual, um, but inside they will just kind of keep going. They, they will have like 
they typically will have like a dormant period. Um, but they won't, they won't die back. Um, in a place like Calgary where we get the, you know, like cold winters, um, we like, they'll just die over the winter and which makes them, um, yeah. But um, yeah, they're very, I find that they're like kind of similar to geranium. So if you keep geraniums warm and in the light, um, they will, they'll kind of bloom like three times um, in a year. Okay, so my soil is a bit too much water. Janessa, hi, how are you? Welcome to the live stream. And so this one is going to need um, a bigger ball because there's just lots of plant mass on top and um, it will tend to fall over when, um, when, the, when the ball dries out. I was going to reply, Janessa, I was going to reply um, you too, but we're not seeing your face. We're only seeing my face. So I'm just adding some more um, soil to my mix here so that to uh, suck up some of the water. And I think I added too much, too much. But let's build this ball up a little bit more. And this drier stuff will suck up some of the moisture, I think. But I think what I'm gonna end up doing is pruning out some of the leaves. Um, from this pot mum. To show off the branching a little bit more. Janessa asks if I can explain um, what a kokedama is um, for her boyfriend. So kokedama is a Japanese planting style. And in Japanese, koke means moss and dama means a ball or an egg-like shape. So if you just take that translation literally, it's moss ball. Um, and so it's moss ball plants, and 
um, what we do is we take plants and we make a ball of soil around the roots, wrap that with moss, and this is moss that I've prepared ahead of time. Um, and then I bind it together with thread. Um, some other uh, practitioners will use other things like twine or um, some people use fishing line, but I will use, um, I love this dark olive green polyester thread. And I like it because it is about the same color as the moss. And so it's, um, it kind of blends in and doesn't steal the show from the moss. So this is the mossy step. And so Kogirama is, you know, I, there's a lot of people who, um, who will say that um, like Kogirama is an ancient art and, um, you know, like they'll say, oh, it's a poor man's bonsai. Um, and like from, from what I've researched, I, I don't, I feel like how we do Kokedama now is really quite, um, it's quite new, like sort of like 50, 60 years new. Um, and like the way I do it is different than how many people do it in Japan. A lot of that difference is in the materials that are available, um, the, the weather um, and things like that. But, um, you know, I, from what I can tell, Kogedama is an evolution from, um, uh, like, Kusamono. And, um, which has, you know, sort of roots in bonsai, but like not directly in bonsai. Um, and so I consider it quite a young um, art or planting style. Um, oh, AT Peace, welcome to the live stream and Sam47, welcome to the live stream. You're welcome, Janessa. Thank you. 
Pamela, welcome to the live stream. And Becca, 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 welcome to the live stream. I had so much fun saying that. Um, thanks for joining. I would love to one day um, be able to go to Japan on a research trip and to like really um, sort of dig into some of the, you know, where people are like, oh yeah, Kokidama is ancient and, you know, this and this and, um, and like really dig in and see, you know, where do we first start, you know, hearing about it, you know, in, in the history books and stuff or in art and things like that. Um, I think that would be super interesting. It's not something that we can do now, obviously. And, Um, but like when there's time and money and vaccines, um, that would be such an amazing thing to do. And then, um, Pia, Pia Perdana, welcome. Um, so I like, it's really, really dense in here. And um, I think I'm gonna clear out some of these leaves. Um, because these pot mums actually have really nice branching, but they're just, it's just like all hidden by, um, by the leaves. And a lot of those inner leaves, like, like kind of don't do a lot. Um, because they're covered up. Ooh. And then I'm hoping also that opening that up will encourage some more branching inside to give it even more interest. Yeah, we have like this whole branch here where it tried to flower, um, but failed. I think because it was just mashed into all of the all of the leaves. So mostly, I'm getting rid of older leaves uh, to make room for younger leaves. And you'll see when I'm done, it's going to look, um, it'll look a lot different.
Mm, I think I took off one here that I should have left. Um, 